This is the second part of our JSON video. In our first part, we created a servlet that simply writes data out to a given servlet, well, out to a given URL, if you will. So in this video, we're going to query our existing database, and we are going to actually write some JSON data. So we are in the class called plant JSON servlet, and I'm going to I'm going to start by saying, okay, this is uh, named, so we can use our dependency injection. We already uh, control shift O organize imports. We already have the component scan set up in our application uh, dot, uh, application context XML. So Spring knows to look look for these named annotations. I need to get access to my business logic layer, which is this plant service class right here. Uh, let's take a look. I have a method called fetch plants that accepts a plant. All we need to populate in that plant is a common name. What it's going to do is it's going to reach down to our data access layer. Uh, it's going to call hibernate in this case. There we go. We'll get our hibernate DAO. And it's simply going to run a query that says, okay, uh, give me all plants that have this common name. And it uses the like, so it doesn't have to be the full common name. It just has to be a letter that's within the common name. Uh, something like letter E would give us a lot of results, something like that. We can go ahead and dummy it up with that for the moment. In any case, what do I need to do? I need to take this plant service from the business logic layer, and I need to inject it into my plant JSON servlet. So I'm going to say I plant service, which is the interface for that plant service, and then plant service, which is my variable name. I'm going to add at inject and uh, control shift O organize imports. That looks good to me. And save. And red lines are gone. Looks like we're good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is so we're just going to dummy a couple things up here. Uh, I am going to say plant service. Well, let's see. Plant, plant equals new plant. Okay, this is our search term. I actually could just use a string, but we'll go ahead and use, as, use it as it is here. Then plant dot set common. Let something, let's use something that's going to get a bunch of results, like the letter E. Later, what we'll do is we'll actually grab this from the query string. But for the moment, we'll just pass in the letter E as a test case. Okay, so let me put a comment to this effect. Our search criteria. Okay, uh, control M so we can see this in high definition. And now I'm going to say, okay, uh, plant service dot fetch plants. And I'm going to pass in my plant search right there called plant. Okay, control one. And I'm going to say assign to new local variable. Notice that this gives me a list and I can iterate over that list. We will call this list simply plants. Okay, get it closer. So get a list of plants that match the result. Almost there. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and keep our uh, start writing a stream of data. We're going to go ahead and keep uh, our stream of data. We need to do the guts of our work right here we were, where we were previously just saying foo. So for this, we need to use a series of classes that are defined in the Java uh, EE7 standard, and that is JSON object, JSON, uh, several other like that. Okay. But if I said right now, if I went ahead and, and put in here, oops, if I put in here uh, JSON dot create object builder, notice it's not auto completing for me, and that's a sign that something's wrong. Uh, so I get a red line on JSON, Control Shift O, and zero imports added. Okay, so I'm missing something. I'm missing a library. And that library is something we're going to get with this dependency in our POM file. Uh, naturally, I'm going to commit this to GitHub, so don't worry about pausing the video and typing this all out. You can simply copy it from GitHub. I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to look for my POM in this project called Plant Places. And I'm simply going to add this dependency down towards the bottom. Or Maven's really nice, the ability to add dependencies like this on the fly and then just update. Okay, so we add the dependency. Control shift f in Eclipse will format. Control m because I need to go back to Project Explorer. Right-click, 
And I'm going to say uh, Maven and update. And uh, to be honest, I might have automatically done that for me, but we'll go ahead. I'd feel safer if I do it myself. So uh, update, and we'll give it a moment to update. And then I'm going to go back to my plant JSON servlet, go back and look at this in high def. And let's see what we have. Control Shift O. Okay. And Control Shift O should resolve that JSON, and it sure does. Create object builder. Uh, okay, maybe I missed, uh, you look, I misspelled it. Okay, so create object builder. Okay, we're looking good. So this uses a builder pattern where we're basically building up a tree, a hierarchical tree of JSON in memory. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write that tree out to our page. So start building a JSON tree. Okay, uh, I'm going to say control one. And I'm going to say assign to new local variable so that we can get our builder. We'll, just, we'll simply call it builder for brevity. And enter. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say builder dot. Uh, uh, now we're going to hold that just hold that thought just a second. Let's iterate over our. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Uh, let's iterate over our plants. Because we have multiple plants, we're going to need an array. So I'm going to say JSON dot create array builder. There we go. So remember, an array means we have duplicate records of the same type, or not duplicate, but multiple records of the same type. So uh, assign to new local variable, and we'll call this one array builder. Okay, and we're getting closer. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to say for each, there's a trick with this in Eclipse. We want to iterate over our plants collection. So I'm going to say F-O-R-E, control space, in Eclipse. That will give me a little shortcut here to iterate over uh, a collection of plants uh, or collo any type of collection. One thing I don't like is this variable name is plant2 because it noticed that I already used the word plant up here. Let me change this around. I'm going to change that to search plant because uh, I don't want to confuse the two. And I don't like having plant two, plant three, plant four. You forget which is which. Okay, so that takes care of that, and we save. Now, what we're doing here is we're iterating, iterating over the collection of plants, and each time we uh, each time we loop, we're putting the next plant in this variable called plant. Okay, looking good. So what I'll do then is I'm going to say array builder. Well, let's hold the array builder. Let's say let's do one more JSON object builder. I'm going to say uh, JSON create object builder. Okay, and I'm going to control one one more time, and I'm going to say assign to new local variable, and we're going to call this plant builder. Okay, why do I have so many builders? Well, I have one for my root object up here. I have one for the array that's going to belong in that root object. And then I have one here for each individual plant that's going to belong to the array. So I've declared all my builders, but I haven't built anything yet. But don't worry, that building part is coming. Okay, so plant builder, I'm going to say uh, plant builder dot add. And now we need to chain together a bunch of adds. I'm going to say genus. Now note that's just quoted text. And then I'm going to say plant dot get genus. What's that? Well, remember we're using a for each loop, so every time we iterate, the next plant is going to go into this plant variable. So I'm saying, okay, take the genus of that plant, put it here. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to give myself some space. I'm going to say dot add, and we're going to say species. So that's the name in quotes, and then plant dot get species. Okay, give myself some space again, dot add. Notice that this builder pattern means we just keep calling dot add. Uh, let's say common. Okay, and then for the value plant dot get common. So notice that the name is constant. Every time we iterate, we're going to get genus species common as the names. But then the values that they correspond to, that's coming out of our variable. Okay, uh, dot add, and let's say cultivar. Okay, and we're going to say plant dot get cultivar. Okay, so at this point, we've created an object almost. I just need to say dot build. And that means, okay, put it all together. Okay, 
So I'm going to uh, put my cursor on build, control one, and I'm gonna say assign to new local variable. And notice what we get out of this. Uh, we get a JSON object out of this. So I'm gonna call the object plant JSON, and that represents an individual plant. Now what we need to do is we need to add that plant to our array. So I'm gonna look at my array builder up above and I'm gonna say array builder dot add and we'll say plant JSON. Okay, so you see how I kind of had to define the builders in a funny order, the root builder, the array builder, then the individual builder for each individual plant. So as we iterate over the list, we're creating JSON objects for the plants and then we're adding them to this array. Now, when we're done with that, we're going to add the array to our root builder. As a matter of fact, why don't we just go ahead and call it root builder so we don't confuse it with the others. And so after the close of the for loop, I'm going to say root builder uh, dot add. And I'm going to say, uh, okay, we'll give it a name. We'll just say plants spelled correctly. Okay. And then the argument is going to be the array that we're building with this array builder up here. So we'll simply say array builder. And terminate with a semicolon. And save. Okay, so the root has the array. The array, the array has the individual plants. And now let me add a few comments before I go any further. Okay create a JSON object for each plant. The plants will, whoops, plants will have the same names, but different values, okay. Add the plant to our array of plants, okay. And then let's say, add the array of plants to a root JSON object. Okay. Uh, okay, good. And now what we're going to say is write the JSON to our servlet, which is accessed by a URL. So uh, we'll just say writer dot print or println, doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go ahead and say print. And what do we pass in? Uh, we pass in our root object, which, gosh, you know what? We haven't, uh, actually, I have one more step, don't I? Uh, so I'm going to say root builder, uh, plants array builder dot build. We actually have to build that root object. I missed that part. And now control one, assign to new local variable, and we'll call that root. And that gives us our root JSON object. And that's what we're going to print to our servlet. <laughs> if I can type it right, there we go. Root. Okay, now deep breath, we have just a few more things to go. First of all, we're using dependency injection here. You might remember that we associated spring with faces by doing this listener class earlier. Unfortunately, that does not apply to our servlet. So we're going to have to do a little magic here. I'm going to say init, control space. This is an initialization method that the servlet is going to call when it starts up. Now, by the way, what I'm doing here, we wouldn't do in every single servlet. We would probably make a superclass servlet that would do this initialization once for all of our servlets. But nonetheless, let's wait for future complexity until we actually need it. Now, the line to wire up dependency injection is a bit long, so I've I've pre-copied it into Notepad. Uh, again, don't worry, I'm going to post this all to um, GitHub, so you can just copy it straight from there if you want. So we need to do a bit of dependency injection. Uh, I'm just going to put a comment to that effect that this sets up our dependency injection. Okay, and save. Okay, uh, a couple other things. JSON doesn't like null, so we're going to have to do a, a bit of null checking here. The genus and the species should be okay, but eh, we probably want to be safe. Let's start with cultivar, which is often empty. Um, I don't like doing a whole lot of inline work like this, but uh, we'll go ahead and do a quick and dirty. So if plant get cultivar is not null, then we're going to say question mark, then plant.cultivar colon empty string. 
So what this says is, if the if the cultivar is not null, then put in the cultivar. But if it is null, then just put in an empty string instead of null because JSON just doesn't like null. Let's do that for each of these guys that we have up above. So not equal null question mark. If it's not null, we're going to use plain dot get common. But if it is null, we're going to use double quote. Okay, and again for species, the same thing. A little bit of magic here. Okay. Um, okay, and question mark, boom, and colon, boom. And genus, I think we're going to be safe, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. So, boom, question mark, oh, whoops, not equal null, uh, question mark, boom, colon, boom, like so, and save. Okay. I am going to now rebuild, redeploy, pause the video while I do that, and then we'll take a look. And now the server has restarted. Let's remember how we're going to invoke this servlet. The servlet is called plant JSON servlet. And if we take a look at our web XML, we will find a mapping. The slash plants URL maps to plant JSON servlet in web XML. Plant JSON servlet maps to the fully qualified class name plant JSON servlet. So let's go ahead and add that URL, plants, and enter. And what do we see? Uh, we see a little bit of data here. Now I do have several duplicate plants in the database, and that's why you see uh, the red buds here. The red bud is misspelled. Uh, but aside from that, you see uh, Acer, Rubrum, Autumn Blaze, Maple, then a red bud, Circus, Chinensis, the Chinese red bud, Quercus rubrum, Pleasant Ridge red oak, Leorodendron tulipiferia, the uh, tulip tree, so on and so forth. I can take this and put it into a JSON viewer, and let's make sure that it turned out okay. So there's JSON viewer, viewer, dot stack, dot hu, one I've used for quite a while. And we'll give it just a moment. And we put our JSON text in here. And go back to our viewer and let's see what we get. Okay, you see we have our JSON root object, our plants array, which is indicated by the square brackets. And then we can expand that and we can see Autumn Blaze Maple, Red Bud, going down to number 10 here, Pleasant Ridge Red Oak, Chinese Red Bud, uh, White Oak, and then tulip tree, and then these ones in the middle are just the duplicates that I have. Nonetheless, we see we have a very good, very valid JSON. As a matter of fact, if I go to plantplaces.com and we look at the live JSON stream, this is the live, uh, let's see, we'll say common equals red bud. This is the live JSON stream that is feeding the Plant Places mobile app, the Android app. So this is live data. It's used by a lot of people who've watched my videos as well. I know a lot of people have asked for this URL. Let's compare this and see how this looks. And I go to Viewer. And sure enough, JSON, Plants, Circus Canadensis Eastern Red Bud, Circus Canadensis Appalachian Red Red Bud, uh, Covey Lavender Twist, so on and so forth. So you see what we've done in our servlet is we have been able to uh, replicate this live JSON feed in a very simple way. So that'll wrap us up for this video. In our next video, we'll see how we can parameterize this a little bit better uh, so that we can actually make it like the live plant places JSON stream. So if I put in maple, we're going to get back maple trees and so on and so forth. So that's what we'll take a look at our next video. I look forward to seeing you then.